Good morning, everyone, and welcome to New Wellness TV with Dr. Lee. Today, we have a very hot topic that we are discussing. This is one of those topics that are somewhat taboo. A lot of people don't want to highlight, and some people shy away from talking about, talking about it with their medical doctors. We are discussing how your thyroid may impact your bedroom performance. We're going to be joined by Dr. Robert Mathis. He is a medical doctor. He is the guru of thyroid health in the endocrine system. As you know, Dr. Lee is the primary host of the show. Dr. Lee, we're waiting for her to join us now, but I want to open up some content as it relates to thyroid health. It's not uncommon for you to have normal thyroid level. That means once your doctor has drawn your blood work, you can have a normal blood thyroid level like your PSH, that's your thyroid stimulating hormone, your T3 levels as well as your T4 can all be normal, but it could be not functioning correctly, it, meaning there could be some dysfunctions with that thyroid. When it comes to thyroid health, it actually starts in vitro. It's not something that starts to decline as you age, although some people, it is common that some people do acquire thyroid dysfunctions with age, and that's hypothyroidism. Hypo meaning lower under functioning, or hyperthyroidism, and hyper means an overactive thyroid. Now let's get into the bulk of it. What are some of the primary issues that can be seen in the bedroom when there is a thyroid problem? Well, guys, <laughs> and I hate to say it, but it can cause erectile dysfunctions which means that it offsets how you get an erection and keep an erection. I wonder if any of you guys out there have had some of these problems and you've experienced it. Um, for women, it can actually cause vaginal dryness and reduced sex drive, meaning you just don't want it. And when you do want it, you just can't perform correctly because of the vaginal dryness. I'm waiting for Dr. Lee and Dr. Mathis to join us now, but I just wanted to highlight a few things as it relates to thyroid health. As we know, iodine is one of those key nutrients that helps the thyroid function normally. Iodine is a powerhouse. It's actually found in your sea vegetables and kelp, and oftentimes it is really difficult to get from the diet, especially if, you're, if you don't have a sea vegetable diet are a diet that's high in seed vegetables. Basically, the average person is supplementing um, iodine to ensure they're getting adequate levels. Now, I know you guys have seen iodized salt, and the government years ago took um, a drastic attempt to reduce the onset of deficiency because it was just a number of people suffering with iodine deficiency, so they decided to put it in the salt. But what a lot of us using sea salt nowadays, and it doesn't have the added iodine in it, is that a problem? Well, according to the research, it does state that there has been a drop in um, iodine serum levels for the average American since the average American has switched over to sea salt. Again, that's something you can supplement with. There's also other key factors that impact the thyroid, like gordogen. Now you're like, what the heck are gordogens, right? Well, gordogen vegetables are like the cabbage family, the kale family. They are said to impact the way the thyroid functions. Essentially, gordogens are um, vegetables that are beneficial for those with hyperthyroidism and have no benefit for those with hypothyroidism. So let's get into some characteristics, okay? What does hypothyroidism look like? Well, because it slows down the metabolic system and it slows down the body, there can be some added weight gain. There can be some mental fogginess. There can also be um, a delay in how you respond to questions and answers because it kind of slows down the entire system. It also can slow you down to the point to where it slows down digestion, impacting how you break down micronutrients. Now, hyperthyroidism, and don't confuse it with ADHD, although they look similar, okay? So hyperthyroidism, um, the individual tends to be more energetic, a little hyper, oh, and don't look at me like I have hyperthyroidism, okay? 
But hyperthyroidism, they tend to be very high energy because their metabolic system is working a whole lot faster than those with hypo. They tend to be on the thinner side. They also turn over nutrients really, really fast. Basically, when they eat food, because their metabolic system is moving so fast, they, they tend to metabolize and break it down really, really fast. So now that we've gone over some of the key aspects of that, let's discuss how it truly, truly, truly can be corrected and what are the telltale signs that it's impacting you in your bedroom. Now, please go get a pen and paper. It's going to be important for you to write this down. Sex is very healthy and it's something that we all should be enjoying safely. Okay, we have our pen and pad. Are you sure? Okay. One, one, that your thyroid is impacting your bedroom functions. Males, like I said, you're perhaps having a problem getting an erection and maintaining that erection. Now, a unique thing is that erectile dysfunctions is also coupled with heart disease because of how the body has to circulate blood around the system. If you have any plaque buildup, atherosclerosis, it can truly impact how much blood is flowing to the penis. And of course, we know it's that flow to the penis that gives you that healthy erection. So let's not confuse it with that. Let's look at some other aspects that can kind of tell you if it's actually a thyroid problem. So we have the erection problem. Um, perhaps, like I said, you're getting it up and not keeping it up or you can't get it up at all. Other things are like um, unintended weight gain for hypothyroidism. You are gaining weight, although you are consuming the same amount of foods, uh, you're exercising the same, being tired and lethargy, just tired. You're, you're tired for no reason. You're, again, you're, you're properly supplementing. You have a very healthy diet. You've always been very active, but you're just tired all the time. Those are some telltale signs. At the end of the show, we are going to highlight some ways that you can analyze yourself to see what is or is not going on. Now, ladies, let's highlight the number one for ladies. Like I stated in the beginning, vaginal dryness, okay? When you have a problem, just secreting some of those natural fluids. We have to keep in mind the thyroid is a part of the endocrine system and the endocrine system governs our hormones. It's like the manager of how our hormones function. And when you have those problems with um, vaginal dryness, it could be other issues as well, like uh, perimenopause, postmenopause, that's coupled with that because again, it's your, it's your hormones, not so much your thyroid. It could be, but again, we're looking at hormones. So ladies, we have this vaginal dryness and we understand that perhaps maybe you are or are not attracted to the person that you are engaging sexual acts with. But if it is a fact that you're highly stimulated by this individual and they definitely turn you on, let's take a look and see how that thyroid is functioning. Okay. Um, number two for the guys. Number two for the guys, you lose interest in sex. And you may think, oh, okay, well, I'm at that age and I just, you know, it's, it's age appropriate. You know, it's not uncommon for guys to say, hey. I just don't want it like I used to. You know, I'm not a teenager anymore. Well, it could be that, but at the same time, you want to make sure you rule out any thyroid dysfunction because if you were that individual that was very active in the bedroom and all of a sudden you're not anymore, you want to make sure you look at how your entire system is functioning that governs your erections, right? What is controlling your bedroom functions. You want to take a very close look at that. And ladies, it's the same for you. You lose the desire to have sex. Um, you have a decreased sex drive or a non-existing desire for sex. Again, the hormones play a key role. And as we discussed the thyroid that governs how our bodies utilize that, um, hormones, it can impact us. We're 
we're going to take a small break. I want you guys to write down this information because we are waiting for the two powerhouses to discuss some of the key elements as it relates to your thyroid health and what happens in that bedroom. Stay tuned. In the future, talk radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life. From Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at UBNRadio.com. Now that you've found UBN Radio and discovered our quality talk shows, it's time to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe. 24 hours of music and talk. Radio without limits. That's why people keep coming back for more. That's UBNRadio.com. Okay, so we are still waiting, but we're going to do this together. Again, we are discussing how your thyroid impacts your bedroom performance. As we move forward throughout the show, I want you to know that this show is brought to you by New Wellness Healthcare. New Wellness Healthcare is a full functional wellness center that addresses elements from heart disease to cancer. We perform functional medicine, or what we like to call true care. At New Wellness Healthcare, we offer top-line body screening, full functional analysis, blood testing, IV nutrition, IM injection, weight loss, weight gain. We address, of course, erectile dysfunctions, and we do everything on a holistic level. So it's all about how the body is working and getting everything in unison, mind, body, and spirit. So let's get back to a little bit about thyroid health. Um, I was talking to a girlfriend of mine, and as I talked to her about the thyroid, she was even confused as to where the thyroid was located. So it's like this butterfly organ in the base of your neck. Okay, and this butterfly organ is responsible, like I said, for governing a lot of aspects, metabolism, energy level, how you metabolize food. When we think about the thyroid, a lot of individuals have been focused on the Fukushima fallout, and that was that large plant overseas that had leaked a lot of radiation. As we know, this radiation could damage and have... Um, a negative impact on the thyroid. So over the years, um, we've seen after the fallout, we've seen a lot of things going on with the thyroid as far as, as far as its functionality. But you safeguard your thyroid by, of course, dietary measures. We discussed iodine. You safeguard your thyroid by properly testing to make sure that it's functioning correctly. Now, the average doctor will run a thyroid panel. This thyroid panel will consist of a TSH, and that's your thyroid stimulating hormone. It's how your thyroid stimulates these hormones, right? And a T3 and a T4. And those are very basic. You're just looking at what the thyroid is doing, right? But you want to know how the thyroid is functioning. So there's other thyroid tests like a reverse T3, a T3 uptake, um, thyroid antibodies, and it kind of lets you know what the thyroid is actually functioning like. Because, I mean, let's be real. If I have a stomach problem, okay, I know I have a stomach problem. Bottom line, I don't need a doctor to tell me I have a stomach problem, but they will. They'll tell you you have a stomach problem or a holistic practitioner, whoever it may be. You know, you go in, you, you take the time off, and they tell you what you know. Okay, you have a stomach problem. Now, the next thing is what is causing my stomach problem and how is it impacting my health? And those are the key things you always want to know. And that's why it's so important that you stay tuned all the way, the duration of, the, of this entire show, because we are going to highlight some aspects that you can check your thyroid yourself at home for functionality, okay? Um, and those are the key things. How is it functioning? What exactly is it doing? And is it doing what it's supposed to be doing? Because we know, ladies and gentlemen, and I am on the boat with you, that the bedroom is a very intimate place. And it's that place that you share yourself with your loved one. 
And when you have problems doing that, it could really cause rifts in relationships. And I'm going to tell you firsthand. Um, I know I said don't look at me as someone that had a thyroid dysfunction, but I do. I have hyperthyroidism. And it was discovered when I have a daughter, and she's now 15 years old. It was discovered when I did a full checkup during the pregnancy with her. So 15 years ago, I discovered I had a gorder. And a gorder is an abnormal thyroid. Actually, your thyroid grows either fatty tissue or a tumor. Thank goodness, mine is just a fatty tissue. So because my thyroid is overworking, it grew essentially. And we, take a, we took a very close look at everything. We looked at my iodine levels. We looked at how my um, adrenals were functioning. We looked at how my pituitary gland was functioning because again, we're looking at functionality, right? I want to know how it's functioning and why it's dysfunctioning. And all those things came back normal. After I did a genetic analysis, my thyroid dysfunction is actually connected to a genetic defect. So mine is more genetic related versus uh, functionality or dysfunction of my body. And I've been able to live with my um, hyperthyroidism, like I said, for 15 years um, and by my personal choice without medication. But it has had problems in the bedroom. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I have had a reduced sex drive, which is why I said, you know, it is important that we bring this topic out that people fully understand and know. It's only through the IVs and at New Wellness Healthcare that I've been able to balance and restore how my hormones function. Um, so I'm telling you firsthand that when your body is not functioning like it used to and it can impact a loved one, it could definitely have some residuals on a relationship. We're going to take another small break. I want to make sure you guys are writing this information down. We're going to take another small break because we're going to welcome Dr. Lee into the studio. Now that you've found UBN Radio and discovered our quality talk shows, it's time to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe. 24 hours of music and talk. Radio without limits. That's why people keep coming back for more. That's UBNRadio.com. Welcome, welcome everyone. And I just want to thank you for your patience. And uh, we have a wonderful show for you. I have a dear friend as a guest. He is just phenomenal. Uh, the last time he was on a show with me, it was... <laughs> I think almost six years ago, and we met greater than maybe eight or nine years ago. We have so many mutual friends, and I'm just so grateful that he um, is going to be here with us today. So we have a lot of great information. I want to thank uh, Siobhan uh, Lovett, or Siobhan Kamen, my wonderful daughter, who is a clinical nutritionist, to bring forth some information here while we were waiting. And again, I want to thank everyone for their patience. But you're going to be so excited that you waited. Thank you so very much. Okay, I'm going to bring on my guest, Dr. Robert Mathis. And he's going to kind of tell you a little bit about himself. But he is certified in so many uh, aspects as it relates to health care. He's certified in anti-aging and uh, functional medicine. He has so many degrees and just a very dear friend. He's going to go over a little bit more. We um, got a little behind schedule here, but thank God that we are here now and we're about to get started. And I am so excited about having the son, you know, dealing with the thyroid. Um, and he's going to be on with us in just momentarily. Um, but I just want to say, too, we had a chance to kind of listen to Siobhan Cameron and her journey with thyroid disorder, but, you know, um, I had never had a thyroid problem until a CT scan. So I'm telling people, if you ever had any nuclear medicine type of examination, please check your thyroid and your kidney function. If you ever had a CT scan when they use nuclear medicine, that's all I want to say right now, uh, because we have so much information to share with you. Dr. Robert Mathis, again, um, has a plethora of information he's going to be sharing with us. And 
doing a show with him, you know, and I think it was 2013, we went over so many aspects that we're going to go over some of those today, but we have so many other things to add along with uh, some wonderful information he wants to share. It's just going to be phenomenal. So again, I want to thank you for your patience and uh, we'll be with Dr. Mathis momentarily. Just give me one moment. We're going to take just a momentary break. <laughs> Dr. Mathis, we are back again live. Thank you for that short little break, and we're going to get rolling here because we have a lot of information to share with the world. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Yeah. Oh, great. We're ready to go. Okay, so whenever they throw up the slides, we'll be all set. Okay, there we go. Slides are there. They are? Yes. Okay, I don't see them. <laughs> Am I supposed you, to you, see them? No, I was told in the studio you won't see them. Oh, no. <laughs> so we're on okay. slide one, um, and it's a slide that... I won't see them. Oh, that's not <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Huh? All right, so we're going to start with slide number one. Here we go. Yes, thank you. So this is just an introductory slide. It says the thyroid is the master regulator. It gives my information. But slide number two says anatomy and histology. And I, I just wanted to throw this slide up here just so folks can understand that biological systems are extremely complex. Each of these little tiny cells we see in this picture are have multiple hundreds of receptors sites on them, even opiate receptors. Okay, we want to keep this very layman turn because oh, we have is. a lot it of is. people. Okay. Does I that... just want to show you what it looks like so you can go, oh my gosh, look at how complicated it is. Okay. Slide number three. Thank you. When you look at slide number three, and we go through the steps, step one, step two, step three, step four, uh, step five, it, this just shows the folks how complicated the, the single thyroid cell is and the process involved to, get a, to make a molecule of thyroid. I just want people to understand this is not just one, two, three. This is a whole bunch of steps, all requiring nutrition. Yes. Let's go to step slide number uh, four. Now, slide number four says nutritional needs. Now, I know our talk is about thyroid in the bedroom, but, you know, if we don't get the nutrition we need, the thyroid's not going to work. We can forget the bedroom, and yet most definitely. Yeah, you're not going to be in the bedroom because you're not going to feel very good. And when you go in there, you're going to be asleep because you feel terrible. Oh, you will so, not be sleeping. You'll be somiac. Okay. Right, or you'd be like, yes, in, uh, insomnia. So here we are, nutritional needs, selenium, zinc, magnesium, tyrosine. Where do these come from? They come from item number four, the soil. It's where it all begins. If we don't get the nutrition up from the soil, the bacteria, the soil has its own microbiome. Yes. There's a collection of bacteria and fungi that live in the soil that help prepare the minerals to bring them up into the plant so we can have our selenium, our zinc, our magnesium. So hazelnuts, which are very high in selenium, actually acquire selenium from the soil. Yes, It doesn't do. come out of thin air. And if we don't get this, if this soil isn't working, so when Monsanto sprays their products and it prevents the minerals from being chelated and brought up into the plant, the plants basically provide malnutrition. There's not enough nutrition there. Oh, and by the way, let's talk about iodine. Where does that come from? We used to walk barefoot, and the barefoot, we would pick up iodine, which came up out of the ocean and rained down on the earth, and we would walk around and pick it up with our feet, and it would come into our system. Anywhere from uh, Dr. Price, uh, Weston Price, he, he studied people. He found somewhere around one to one and a half milligrams of iodine in the diet per day in the tribal folks that he studied in wow. the 30s. So this is just an idea that iodine has to be part of our diet because yeah. iodine is essential for thyroid function. Yes, it is. So we want to get in that bedroom as soon as we can, but we got to start with this. 
<laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> so we have to consider the sources of each of these, and we must have these things to work. Now, after we get the soil to work, and we don't let Monsanto spray their things on the soil and damage the bacteria because it kills the bacteria, now we have to digest our food. And I apologize, but in order to get the thyroid to work, we got to digest this food. We need stomach acid, and we need enzymes. Yes, we do. Stomach acid helps make intrinsic factor, which helps make the vitamin B12 get absorbed. And it turns out, I read a recent article, and it said that a little tiny bit of lithium helps to import B12 into the cells. If the B12 level looks a little high on the blood test, it may actually be a faulty receptor and it can't bring the B12 into the cells. So I've given a few patients some lithium. Their white count was a little low, like around 2.1, 3.0 instead of above 4. I gave them some lithium, say 2.5 milligrams of lithium, not much. You know what, doctor? It's unique. I'm sorry to cut you. It's unique that you highlight that because we have been seeing elevated serum B12 levels um, off the charts, but yes. elevated homeocysteine. And Dr. Yes. Lee and I were discussing that it's likely not properly being absorbed into the cell correctly. Correct. Exactly. So if you look at folate and you see folate is greater than 24, serum folate greater than 24, that to me says that the FOLR gene is not working and not importing folate into the cells. So the folate just stays high in the bloodstream. Now these folks, if you look at their genetics, which we'll talk about in a couple more slides, you'll see that they may have one of those SNPs that everybody seems to be talking about now. Exactly. And then there's seven steps in the processing of folate. It's amazing how many steps nature devoted to just processing folate, which seven steps, that's like, okay, why? Most but other products, there's one or two steps. Folate has many because it must be just that important. Yeah, I, I, want to say, I want to say, too, because I know we don't want to lose any of our audience. Please stay tuned because you're going to hear about how you could be tested so you'll know if your pathways are properly right. working so that you can absorb these nutrients that your body needs. And then right. it isn't just running to the local drugstore or the local health food store buying supplements. You need to know and not guess which your body is actually utilizing properly. So I didn't mean right. to cut you off, but I don't want to lose no, the audience. Okay. I want them to know that right. we're going to show you the tests that you need to have done so that you know that you're healing properly. You know that your body is taking it, uh, the nutrients that it needs, and, and there's not a, a defect in the genes. Now, just a word about the microbiome. Yes. The colon has... There's more DNA in the colon than there is DNA in us. Some Correct. people estimate it it's 10 times, 100 times. They're not sure exactly how many bacteria really are on board with us. And they produce some of our vitamins and some of our other minerals, and they help recycle things and hormones and so forth. So the microbiome needs to work also to get that thyroid to work. Let's go and on that's this. what I was discussing originally, is okay. that we have a lot of babies that were born C-section and not going through that vaginal canal, losing right. that diversity initially. And right. thyroid problems are starting way before they're actually seeing it on the lab when they become young adults, when they start testing. Well, so what, they, what a few people have done is they have taken these C-section babies. Yes. They've put some gauze in mother's vaginal area. Right. soaked it with vaginal secretions, put it into the mouth of the newborn to help colonize these kids properly. So they're colonized mm -hmm. with mom instead of colonized with hospital bugs. Very Correct. Good. Yes. You can read some articles about that. People are doing this. Let's take and a look well at known. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Let's take a look at slide number uh, five. Slide number five says T4 to T3. Really quickly, we just want to make sure we understand that T4 is not the active hormone, that T3 is actually the active hormone that drives us and drives our thyroid. Yes. It helps us make heat energy and so forth. T3, as I noted there in red, is five times more active than T4. And we need that T3 through the 5' prime diiodinase enzyme to create the T3, the active hormone. Next slide. Next slide says circulating thyroid hormones about 99%, which this is amazing. 
most of these hormones are bound on proteins. It's like right. mind-boggling that these things are they're, they're there in minute amounts, and even in minute amounts, most of the minute amount is bound on proteins. So you're yeah. thinking, well, how do we get this to work? So here we are, thyroxin binding globulin and plasma proteins, TBG. Now, it's also interesting to note that estradiol increases TBG. Yes. And so women, Estrogen. during yeah. their monthly cycle, they actually have thyroid levels decrease as they're reaching day 12 of their monthly cycle, and then in the latter part of the cycle, the TBG level drops because estrogen drops. Yes. So this is fascinating. And so I just, women are, go and I, ahead. If I could just interrupt here, because we're mention, mentioning terms, and I want people to know right here and right now that you, you, when you go to the doctors or your primary care, most in most cases, sometimes they just do a TSH, TSH thyroid stimulating hormone. And what Dr. Mathis is going over is actually your lab tests. These are lab tests that you need to know, and we're going to go through before the show ends and let you know exactly what tests that we actually run, too, in New Wellness Healthcare, but what tests you need to know when we're talking right. about thyroid function. So right now Correct. we're talking about blood work. We put a, we're speaking on your lab tests that you need to know. Why guess okay. when you can know? Please go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. So... Testosterone treatment also causes a decrease in TBG. So it seems like, interestingly enough, that men are favored in thyroid, I'm not sure why, versus women who estrogen lowers their thyroid while testosterone increases their thyroid. And when you treat women with uh, testosterone, it actually lowers their uh, TBG protein, which then unbinds a lot of uh, that thyroid and allows them to have more thyroid action. Let's go to the next slide briefly just to talk about inflammation. It's important for us to know that thyroid function is dependent upon a modestly inflamed body. And I mean modestly referring to you can't live without inflammation. Correct. But you can't live with too much inflammation. No, you cannot. So I'm going to have to call this the Goldilocks phenomena. In other words, <laughs> in other words one porridge bowl was too hot, one was too cold. <laughs> But it was just right. So the body is the same way. We got to be down the middle here. And it says yeah. that interleukin-6, a cytokine, inhibits this 5 prime diiodinase, which we just saw in the last slide, from converting T4 to T3. So when we get inflamed with Lyme disease, when we get inflamed with mold toxins, when we get inflamed from our jack-in-the-box and McDonald's meals... <laughs> Or Taco Bell. Hold on, we maybe Taco Bell's okay. But anyway, okay. so no, 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 no. What MSG. happens is the IL six level goes up, and then we have a decrease in thyroid function. That can come from also in the brain. It says here glial cells and adipose tissue all produce this inflammatory interleukin, which folks may or may not know about this, but it helps them to hear the words. So eventually down the road they'll understand when somebody starts talking about it. Yes, and also cortisol levels. Now, IL-6 production with modest cortisol increases reduces the uh, inflammation versus when we get too much anxiety, then the adrenaline kicks in and we get more inflammation. So these are just ideas, just so we know there's more to thyroid than just going to the bedroom. Most definitely. And, and it looking six is an inflammatory marker. It's an inflammatory response for those out there that were confused about that. Right. So, and there's a lot of uh, interleukins, but IL-6 is one of the prominent ones in research. Let's take a look at slide number seven. Yes. Let's see. Number eight, sorry. Number eight, it says mitochondria at the top. Now, okay, okay. when Sherry Lynn wanted me to do this, I said, you know, i got to start from the beginning. Because if we don't have all these pieces of the puzzle, this thyroid isn't going to work. And then we go in that bedroom, nothing's going to work. Okay. <laughs> at all. <laughs> So here we are, mitochondria. Who are these people? Well, there's a little picture of mitochondria in the lower uh, right-hand corner. It's a organelle by name, and it's some people believe it's a bacteria that used to live with us a long, long time ago, and it finally got incorporated into the cell, and the primary job of this organelle is to make energy. Yes. That energy is used to run all of our systems. It's really a lot like a checkbook. 
when it comes time to buy a tire, put some gas in the car, if that Visa card or that checkbook has no money in it, then guess what? You're going to sit at the gas station or better yet, go back to work because you've got no way to fill the tank up. not be going back so, to work. <laughs> mitochondria is our energy, and we have yes. to have as much as possible. So really, sleep is one of the most important times in our life because sleep regenerates our storage of ATP or energy. Yes, it does. It gives mitochondria a chance to repair energy-producing organ inside the cells. There's 200 to 5,000 mitochondria per cell. The T3 enhances mitochondrial function. So when you want to ramp up a little energy, this is where the T3 comes in. T3 is the primary active hormone in thyroid, not TSH, T3. And we should be checking T3 and reverse T3 and looking at that ratio to see how thyroid's functioning. Yes. There are many known mitochondrial poisons. Yes. I'm going to name a couple right now. Number one is Cipro. Number two is Levo. Uh, number two is uh, Leviquin. In other words, antibiotics tend to be poisonous to the mitochondria and lower the energy level, lower the function of the mitochondria. There's a number of chemicals and toxins out there that are also poisonous to the mitochondria. It's a long, long list. You know, you know People, Dr. Matthews, I don't want to, um, to cut you off here. But in lieu of the fact that we had such a late start, we're going to do a part two um, because oh, it's so okay. much valuable information. We do have okay. at least four and a half more minutes. Oh, so okay. if you can kind of wrap up some things within okay, the next good. four and a half minutes. Yes. All right. Thank you. So let's, let me take a peek at the slides here and see which. Um, do you have anything on the Barnes test? Which one? The Barnes test. Barnes test. Tell me about the Barnes test. Um, where temperature. you the temperature analysis. Temperature? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good point. What do you feel about that one? Well, you know, body temperature is interesting. Uh, generally speaking, the mitochondria produce the energy, and they produce also heat. So Correct. they produce ATP and heat. And I go swimming in the ocean every morning where the temperature is about 59 degrees today. And I'm stimulating the brown fat to produce a UCP or an uncoupling protein so I can have more heat produced by the mitochondria and stimulate them to reproduce themselves because the, bo the body thinks that it's really cold. Right. That's called cryotherapy, and it actually right. works. Uh, if we, um, so that's why I go in. Let's take a look at slide number 12 real quick. And in fact, um, let me see. Let's take a look at slide number 13, 14, number 14. We're going to talk about genetics for one second, but I'm so, I apologize. We should go to slide number 10 so we can explain what a SNP is. Okay, and uh, while, while you're doing that, I just want to say, in doing the Barnes test, I like people to test their temperature throughout the day. Uh, right. So if they test throughout the day, um, you kind of see a pattern. So basically, you'll know whether I should have the blood test in the morning afternoon a little later and your doctors sure. will work with you and we we actually uh, provide this service at new wellness Healthcare. so we Excellent. have about two and a half minutes so we want to get into oh, as much minutes. as we can yeah <laughs> it's going to be a part two i have to bring you back dr okay. mathis it <laughs> have to be a part two all right well okay. uh let's go to the next to the last slide slide 21 let's get let's get serious here um, <laughs> slide 21 <laughs> These are the symptoms of hypothyroid. So depression, fatigue, weakness, lethargy, decreasing sweating, difficulty breathing, heart palpitations, poor vision, choking sensation, numbness and tingling, low body temperature, insomnia, cold hands and feet, constipation, weight gain, joint and muscle pain, thin brittle nails, dry, thin brittle hair, pale color. And now they're saying that things like Alzheimer's disease or neurologic uh, neurodegenerative diseases may be related to mitochondrial dysfunction, which is also related to poor thyroid function. So that also can have an impact. Let's go to the slide before that, slide number 20, which says that in order to diagnose hypothyroid, uh, which has many symptoms, the lab is, TSH is not reliable. No, it isn't. You to measure or should measure reverse T3 and free T3 and look at that ratio to see how people are doing. And then the summary slide in 10 seconds or less, the summary slide says that the earth and all things on it are connected. Yes. Okay, what does that mean? 
Well, unfortunately, we're connected to the dirt outside. <laughs> yes, we are. And if the dirt isn't working, then we don't get the food, the nutrition into the food. And then if we don't work and we can't digest it and so forth. So I tried to paint a picture where we all the little pieces of the puzzle have to work. They also have to be in that Goldilocks range where they have to be not too much and not too little. I mean, you can take too many supplements and you can take too few. And yeah. people can tell the difference. Yes, you will. There's an there's an underlying rhythm that exists that, that runs everything. Respecting that rhythm will nurture, if it's spelled right, health and wellness. And I have this last lecture I went to, they gave us a mnemonic. It's called SHINE, S-H-I-N-E. And it says sleep is number one, hormones are number two, infections, number three, nutrition, number four, and exercise, number five. You know, even this, it's a little bit of exercise goes a long way. Yes, it Amazing. does. But I have a diabetic that came in, and she had, she was on 40 units of insulin twice a day, and her wow. endocrinologist, she'd seen two or three, and I said, okay, well, I'll tell you what, why don't we cut the insulin, because I know you feel terrible. Your sugar's about 250, so we cut it in half. She got to 20 and 20 twice a day. She came back in 10 days. She said, I feel so much better. Her resting insulin level was 6060, which made her feel terrible. Wonderful. I told her to cut the insulin okay. again. Now she's on 10 and 10, 10 in the morning, 10 at night. And she's doing really well. And we should talk about that sometime. About yes, diabetes. we will. Well, we're going to, we're going to have to end now. Um, and I just want to thank you. Can everyone. I just make one final statement? Yes. Um, we, we have to go. I'm there, certain count, that Dr. Down. Mathis coupled reducing insulin with controlling for diet and other things as well, not just right. simply telling her to reduce insulin. Oh, so no. people she out has, there, do not yes. cut your insulin unless you come see a professional. That's correct. Most definitely. And thank you so much, um, um, Ms. Siobhan Kamen. I appreciate you being here, my wonderful, beautiful daughter. I'm so proud of you. And I want to say that I just want to thank everyone. Dr. Mathis, we will be bringing you back again because you, you okay. have a plethora of information that we have to get out to the public. And I thank you. And okay, I, thank you very much. You're more than welcome. And as I end this show, I just want to tell everyone, please share this with your friends, family, because a life you save really just may be your own. And remember your lab tests. You know, you just don't want someone to tell you that your tests are normal. Get copies of them. You can forward them to myself. You can forward them to Dr. Mathis. But we're very good in doing functional blood tests and very thorough in going over everything with you at New Wellness Healthcare. So I want to thank everyone. And please repeat after me as we end this wonderful show. I am. I am. So grateful. So grateful. So grateful. That I am. That, that I, I am. am a magnet for miracles. A magnet, <laughs> a magnet for, miracles. for miracles. Wonderful. Have a wonderful, blessed day, everyone. Okay. In the future, talk radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life from Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com.